Hello. In this video, I will explain how electric trains traction systems work, how the technology evolved over the years, and why some trains make the interesting and unique sounds that they do. In doing this, I'll be filling an enormous gap in the knowledge of train enthusiasts. Now, this knowledge gap is so big and so common that only very few people I'm aware of actually know how these things work. Before we start, I'll now explain some key parts of electricity that you'll need to know for this video to make sense. Electrical current is the flow of electric charges around a circuit. An increasing current through an appliance means that there are more charges passing through it per second, and a decreasing current means that there are less. DC stands for direct current and is the most basic type of electricity, the kind that you get from a battery. This is when the current always flows in the same direction. AC stands for alternating current and is the type that comes from the mains power. This is when the current changes direction at a certain frequency. This is called the supply frequency. In North America, it's 60 Hz, meaning that the current changes direction 60 times per second. And in almost the rest of the world, it's 50 Hz. A three-phase AC motor has three AC supplies with their cycles slightly offset, which creates rotation, as shown here, whereas a single phase AC motor only has one. If you want to know more about electricity, I highly recommend the Electro Boom 101 playlist linked in the description. The guy explaining it is very knowledgeable and I'd recommend his channel to everyone. Anyway, now on to trains. From the start of electric train technology all the way back in 1879, they couldn't use AC motors to power trains, as it was very difficult to make them work efficiently with only one phase coming in through the overhead wires or third rail. This meant they couldn't use three-phase AC motors, which are generally the most efficient option. And single-phase AC motors could also not be used because starting one up attached to a heavy load is very difficult, which is why even nowadays they're only used on smaller appliances so they had to use DC motors to power trains. There is, however, a problem with starting up a DC motor. The amount of current they draw when starting up is so enormous, it will fry all the internal windings and burn the motor out. So to limit the current, they use resistors. Now, as motors speed up and the load on them decreases, the current they draw will also decrease, which means as the train speeds up, the resistance will need to be slowly decreased. This is done by having a bank of resistors and bypassing them one by one as the train gets faster. And this is usually done by relays controlled by a rotating cam, which is why on trains with this system, you can hear a ticking sound as the train accelerates, if you listen very carefully. Examples of these include any train built in the early 80s or before, including 1972-73 tube stocks and the second gen Glasgow subway stock. The old system worked, but had one problem in particular. The fact that the way resistors limit current is they waste power as heat. Now this makes them less energy efficient and more costly to operate. Now in the mid 80s, a solution was developed by using gate turnoff or GTO thyristors. These are basically electronic switches which can either be on or off, but never halfway. In order to control the current, the thyristor is switched on and off really quickly at a set frequency with the amount of on time being varied. The more on time, the higher the current. Think of it like me switching on and off this cannibalized robot vacuum.
This is called pulse width modulation or PWM. This fixed frequency is known as the carrier frequency. The fire resters back then couldn't switch that large of a load very fast, so the carrier frequency was kept quite low. A train with this traction system will make a hum noise as it accelerates. Examples of this include the class 318 and 320 and the unrefurbished 1992 tube stock. <laughs> Now that we're able to really tap into the pulsing with thyristors, it's now possible to create an artificial AC wave from DC out of either varying the pulse width or using a pattern of pulses. Now this system is called a variable frequency drive or VFD or VF drive. And this allows us to have complete control over three phase AC motors, which can now be used on trains as a result. The thyristor pulsing pattern used starts with a short pulse, then the pulses get progressively longer until the peak of the AC wave, after which the pulses then get progressively shorter. Then the same thing happens for the negative half of the cycle. And for PWM, the pulse width changes accordingly to create the wave. However, because three phase AC motors only work efficiently when the supply frequency matches the rotation, you have to start your supply frequency low and speed it up as the train speeds up. Most trains using VF drives start off in PWM mode and switch to pattern mode at a higher speed. They do this because it's a lot more difficult to match the carrier frequency to the motor supply frequency at higher speeds. For example, if you have a 700Hz carrier frequency and a 30Hz supply frequency, that doesn't divide evenly and as a result it won't work. To prevent the pulsing speed exceeding the maximum load the thyristors can handle, some pulses will be dropped out of the wave cycle. This results in a sudden drop in pitch, and is what makes the famous gear changing sound. An example of a train starting in PWM mode, switching to pattern mode, and then dropping pulses to make the iconic sound is the class 465-9 and the 1996 tube stock. You'll have noticed that newer trains don't make as interesting sounds as older trains. This is because they started using insulated gate bipolar transistors, or IGBTs, instead of the old GTO thyristors. IGBTs can pulse the same amount of power a lot faster than GTOs without being overloaded. It's because of this that pulsing frequencies are a lot higher, which makes the sounds less distinctive or they may just not make the sounds at all. The IGBT VF drives will also stay in PWM mode a lot longer than the old GTO ones. Take, for example, the Class 334 Juniper. So now you know how they work. I'll now talk about some different unique VF drives and explain why they make the sound that they do. Firstly, the Siemens Desiro found on the class 350, 360, 380, 444, 450 and the 700 family on third rail power. 
These sound very unusual because the carrier frequency on these is not fixed. It oscillates up and down. Now Siemens did this because they thought that the frequency they used would resonate and play havoc with the rest of the train. Although this reason isn't actually confirmed. Next, we'll talk about the Holec VF drive, found on the class 323. This one is unique because it starts in pattern mode and never goes to PWM. It also drops pulses from the pattern many times to create its legendary sound. Another unique one is Hitachi. There are older ones found on the class 395 Javelin and the 465-0-1s, and the newer ones found on the class 800 family and the 385. Although slightly different, the principle is still the same. They start at a comparatively low carrier frequency to other models of the same age. And then, in order to avoid switching to pattern mode, now, there is no practical reason for doing this, it starts raising the carrier frequency before switching to pattern mode later on. A very similar drive to this is the CAF Civity, found on the class 195, 331 and 397. On this one, the carrier frequency starts raising from the start instead of being fixed for the first bit. Another series of VFs to talk about are the ones found on a few Bombardier and Siemens locomotives found in Central Europe, namely the UBB1016 and the BR146. These have a raising carrier frequency, but not in the way you'd think. It raises in steps, creating a musical scale as it accelerates, before switching to pattern mode. The final one to talk about is the Breda and Brush Traction VF drives. These can be found on the Copenhagen Metro and the old class 465 and 1s back when they had the Brush Traction VFs. The reason I've put them together is that they're so similar the only difference being the Breda one is slightly higher pitched. Now these have a raising carrier frequency 
but at the very start instead of later on. <laughs> That was quite a lot of information, so feel free to ask any questions at all in the comments below and I'll try and answer as many as possible. So hopefully now you know how electric trains traction systems work and why they make the interesting sounds that they do. In the meantime, thanks for watching and goodbye. <laughs>